you guys see this? These two wimpy, weeny, embarrassingly small trailers that no real man would be seen driving. $800 is the regular price. And this, it's gotta be four foot by four foot. $600, regularly $749. Are they out of their minds? Guys, why hand over your scratch for what's essentially a piece of shit on wheels? We're gonna do it ourselves. You're gonna have the knowledge, you're gonna have the skills, you're gonna have the tools to make this thing happen. Let's get her done. Now this time around, we're gonna do something a little different. This is gonna be less of an instructional video and more of you follow me along on my daily routine and hopefully you'll learn something along the way. We're gonna call this the CheapBastard.net Project Diaries. Just sort of me getting stuff done and hopefully along the way, you'll pick up and be inspired to do it on your own, maybe save a little coin in the process. What I have behind me here today is a trailer I picked up just a couple short days ago. Now I'm gonna use this trailer here for hauling around my materials for the projects we do on the videos. Now normally if you go into a big box store or any type of uh, uh, lumber yard or Home Depot type of thing, you're gonna pay what, between $1,200, $1,400, $1,600 for a trailer of the exact same capacity. How much did I spend? $200. How would I get away with that? Because this trailer started off life as a fifth wheel home camping trailer. The sort of thing you see people go off on vacation, that has got the little box on the back of it, they crank it up, they open it up, it suits uh, three, four people inside of it. But what happened is the previous owner took off the box, took off all the human needs and capacity on it, and what we'll be left with here is a flatbed trailer. Now it's got some cutouts here where the original wheel wells were, and we're going to fabricate something to cover those up just to stay legal along the way, you know what I mean? So come along on the process, I'm going to show you how to save about a thousand dollars by doing your own trailer here. You can find them in the classified ads, you can find them at Kijiji, Craigslist, for really cheap, often very negotiable prices, and you're going to have all the stuff you need. The heavy duty axle, the third leg uh, lift on the front, all the electrical stuff for your signals, and everything you're going to need to stay legal along the way. Keep it locked right here at the CheapBastard.net Project Diaries. Guys, just a reminder, whenever you're pulling screws, nails, fasteners, these types of things, always have your safety glasses on. We just had a little uh, incident here a moment ago. I was pulling a screw, popped right out, missed my eye by about a half inch, and it was coming straight at me. I could see it like a torpedo. So always wear your safety glasses. Luckily, I did it here. It deflected, but I saw it coming right at me. So play it safe, man. I figured I'd just backtrack here and let you know what we just did. I got done uh, welding up all of the uh, deck bolt downs. Basically what I used was uh, these extra brackets only in longer lengths that I had from an old uh, shelving unit that we had that got tossed out. Man, I couldn't bring myself to throw out good steel. You can also use the same stuff that you use for uh, kids' bed frames. You know those steel angle iron bed frames? Don't throw them out, take them, cut them up, they're gonna find a use somewhere else. So what we did is, since these already have holes drilled in them, it saves me a lot of time from having to create holes to drill the deck down to for the bolt up portion. Uh, so I just used all of this extra uh, angle iron bracketry we had laying around here. Used about maybe, I'm gonna guess maybe eight, 10 feet of it. And now we have all of our frame ready for the, uh, for the decking. I'm gonna take a rest today, it's been a long one and we'll cover that tomorrow. 
Okay, a full night's passed. I got some sleep. I feel recharged and refreshed. But, like, I'm not going to make any screw-ups that happen when, you know, when you work too late, you know, you get a little kooky in the head, you make some bad decisions. So now, with all the angle irons uh, welded into place, we have our bolt screws ready, we're going to start laying some decking. Now, for the purpose of this project, I'm using 2x10 pressure-treated planks. I'm going to start in the center, sort of like a, a tile layer or a brick mason. You start in the center and then work yourself out until you reach the end. That way, uh, it's a little more aesthetically aesthetic. Um, some people might start on one side, work the whole way over, and they've got all regular sized planks all the way, and then the last one is only like two inches and it looks all stupid. We're not going to do it that way. We want this thing to last a long time. We want to, you know, not be sad every time we have to go and look at it and be kicking ourselves in the arse. So with that said, we have our center line drawn. We'll lay the first plank, work our way outward. Now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to get some emails and messages and, and hate literature about it. I'm expecting that so much. What we're going to do is we're going to butt the planks up tight up against each other because this is the new pressure treated stuff. This isn't the stuff they used 25, 30 years ago, they stuffed with formaldehyde that was still tend to warp and twist and dry and expand uh, when exposed to water. This stuff's a lot more stable today so you can butt it up against each other. Normally in the old days we do a 1 8 or a 3 16 gap in between the planks. You don't need that. Don't worry about it. Butt them up tight against each other with the crown side of the board. That's that little sort of arky sort of rainbow arc half semicircle thing pointing upward at the end of your cut. So crown side up, butt them up tight, we'll get this thing underway. Let's get it done. Okay, shape it up now. It's actually looking like a trailer. So so far, we're about $200 in for the actual trailer itself. About $150 in for the decking. That brings us up to $250. Plus about $20 for various 3 d bolts and nuts and uh, lock washers. So we're at about eh, $370 right now. Still way below the benchmark of $500 I was shooting for. But it's not really a trailer yet. Sure, it's got wheels and a deck and you can drag it behind you. But we have a little bit left to go now. I gotta get those stakes on the side now. So everything doesn't slide off on the side of the road and create a whole calamity for traffic. So, next we're gonna cut some stakes. What are we gonna use for stakes? We're gonna use probably about a two inch angle iron. Angle iron is that steel that's kind of L shaped if you can get a mental image going on there. Now we can go out and buy it. We're probably gonna drop about, I don't know, $150, but I'm not gonna go that route. Instead, go down to your local salvage yard, your dump, your transfer depot, your reclamation center, and look for an old bed frame. Same thing, angle iron, mild steel, you can't lose. So we're gonna go, we're gonna salvage up some angle iron, get some stakes and rails on there, and make this thing into a real trailer. Keep it locked. Well, the scouting trip went pretty well. Managed to find myself a bed frame that somebody left out by the curb. You see them all the time when people upgrade their kids' beds. They throw the entire frame. It's just gonna get shot in the garbage anyways. That's perfectly good mild steel that you can use. So what we have is about an inch and a half by inch and a half angle irons, as I was describing earlier. And these are gonna be used for the trailer's bed stakes. Now, the bed stakes are the vertical members, the upright, that get welded to the side of the bed, and then you run your rail along the top, just like this, and you box it in. We're gonna do that with our MIG welder just shortly. Now why these are useful is because often you're carrying a big load in the back, well some of us anyways, uh, whether it be a four-wheeler or a skidoo, um, bags or something, garbage, you need to tie stuff down, to keep stuff from falling out on the highway and creating a big national incident. This is where your, this is where your rails and your bed sticks are gonna come in handy. Stick with me, we get these things welded up in short order if the weather holds. It ain't gonna hold. Moving along in a steady clip now, we got our stakes in place from the bed frame. I did have to go out and spend a little coin, I uh, dropped about $50 in materials. What I got here is 2 inch by 2 inch uh, angle iron, a 1 8 inch thick. It's the same dimensions, as, it's the same thickness at least as the, uh, uh, as the stakes, but we're going to go a little bigger on the uh, rails and I'm going to show you why in a minute because we're going to tack on it. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, we're rounding the bend now and we're almost in the final stages of assembly here on our uh, sub $500 trailer project. The last thing to do is I got my 2-inch uh, by 2-inch angle irons here. 
I went two inch by two inch, even though the stakes, the uprights here, are only inch and a half and inch by inch and a half. So I'll have enough overhang and be able to smooth out the edges so we don't get those rough spots in there. It's a really hot day out today, man. It's going to be 90 degrees. I just want to get this thing done. So I got two 12 uh, foot uh, angle irons, and let's get those tied in. And uh, we're rounding the bend towards the end. Let's get it done. Okay, with all of our angle irons all welded in, all the horizontals where they ought to be, let's go ahead and get this thing painted up before we call it a night, all right? Well, guys, with the electrical work to the brake lights all in place, we're all set to hit the road. It's a project you can do over the course of a weekend if you put your mind to it. So don't be afraid to take on new challenges. Don't forget, this used to be a pop-up trailer, and now we're going to use it to haul our junk back and forth through town, our neighbor's junk, and whoever needs a trailer along the way. So a lot of people these days, they buy a full-size truck with a half-ton bed on the back, and they don't really need a pickup. You know, an SUV or a station wagon might be more their speed, so why go to the bother of buying a whole pickup when you really, when you really only need a trailer every now and again? And at the same time, you can make money while you're at it, because there's always students who have to move come the next college semester. There might be neighbors who need to move a fridge across town. You might find something on Craigslist. So don't just think of it as a mode of transportation and transport. Think of it as an opportunity to make money. There's always somebody out there who doesn't have a trailer who's willing to pay $20, $40, $50 to have something shipped across town. Think with your head. Save with your wallet. You know how it's done. Let's take a walk around the old trailer, shall we? Okay, just to recap on this entire build here. We start off with the basic frame from an old pop-up fifth wheel trailer. Paid almost nothing for it. Saw it in the Craigslist classifieds. Always under bid. If they're asking five, you offer three. You're going to meet somewhere in the middle. If they're asking four, you offer two. You meet somewhere in the middle. You don't want to disrespect anybody, but you want to keep that money in your pocket where it belongs. So along the way, what we did is we made some modifications. We laid on a whole pressure treated decking here. I think I'm out maybe $150, $160 in the pressure treated decking here. That'll hold up for years. I'm never going to have to worry about that. Maybe $30 in bolts and fasteners. Along the way, uh, I picked up some uh, tail lights here because tail lights are mandatory. If you're going to take this thing out on the road, you don't want to get in trouble with Johnny Law. So we picked up some tail lights. I went for the $3 ones. So I got $6 in tail lights. Now it's inevitable. Whenever you're helping somebody move furniture or some knucklehead that you know is giving you a hand on his weekend time, inevitably, they're always going to do something stupid like they're going to take, I don't know, a dresser or a table and they're going to smack your tail lights and they're going to bust out your tail light by accident. They'll go, duh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And you're still out of pocket. Sorry doesn't save you. So to prevent boneheads from knocking out your tail lights along the way, look at that. What we did is this. I took a three inch pe a piece of three inch pipe here, you can see it right here, and I cut it in a cross section. I cut a crossway so you have sort of a upside down smile and an up overhead smile. You know what I'm talking about, sort of a rainbow cut here. So I cut it right across the cross section here, flattened it out just a little bit, beat it down, and then put together a little uh, a little roof over the lights here. So you don't have to worry about some knucklehead coming at it this way, giving it a karate chop or a kung fu kick and knocking out your tail lights and getting you in trouble with the law along the way, because that will be a ticket. And where we spent a little bit of money was we went down to the local uh, farm supply company, picked up some fenders for it to keep mud from splashing all over the place and sullying all your nice furniture or your lawn tractors or whatever it is you're hauling across town. As far as the stakes and the rails, as far as the stakes here, don't forget, we only used parts from an old bed frame along the way that was tossed out anyways at the local transfer station. Used the bed frames, cut them up into about 18 inch sections, welded them on, got our uprights on, and I think I was out maybe a few dollars for the, uh, for the horizontal members. You're going to need those along the way. Don't try and go flatbed the whole way. You're not running in the uh, Macy's Day Thanksgiving parade. You're going to need to strap things down along the way so they don't fall off on the highway. Every day I see knuckleheads trying to haul mattresses home strapped to the roof of their Honda or the Toyota Celica. Don't do it. You're going to kill somebody. You're going to hurt yourself. It's not going to have a happy ending along the way. Once again, this has been your pal Chuck for thecheapbastard.net. And remember, saving money is the same thing as making money.